Hi, this is Liz Jeffress, Executive Director at Bay Path Humane Society. And Beth McLeod, Director of Training and Behavior. And we are back. <laughs> uh, it's been a couple months, but we're back with uh, Canine Connections, um, coming off a busy summer, and good to be back. Right. With our mascot, Percy. Our buddy, Percy. Um, yeah, just to start, we just wanted to give a little update on things. It's been, um, it's been a lot. Uh, it's been a, a wild year. I have been at Bay Path for 12 years now, and 2023 has been the most challenging year in my Bay Path career, uh, largely due to... Uh, impacts uh, of the pandemic, not the pandemic itself, but the, the impacts after, you know, with financial issues, evictions. We are seeing so many uh, surrenders, local level. Um, we're seeing a lot of people are losing their housing, needing to consolidate housing, someone's moving in with them, or this or that, um, obviously causing family issues, mental health stuff. I mean, it's just been, it's been a lot. And specifically on the dog end with, and specifically larger dogs, we have seen a, an uptick uh, of 50% more uh, year over year during the, the first months of the year um, of an increased need for local rehoming. And while, you know, Bay Path for years have been taking in transports from um, our partners all over the country, we have always felt that, you know, serving the local population of p pets and, and their families is, uh, should always be a priority. So to that end, you know, we've had to change our focus and, and focus really heavily on the, the massive increase in local need. Um, and that includes working with some of our animal control partners. Um, Beth, I know you know that, uh, you know, I've heard from local animal control officers in our community that, you know, they usually team up with different organizations and everyone's saying they're full. And you have Everybody. animal control saying, I can't, I, I have nowhere to take these animals. We, we dealt with something I was in on Sunday. Someone called in a town maybe 20 minutes from here that, uh, I won't name the town, but they don't have an animal control operation right now, so they've outsourced to another local city. Um, they went to a shelter, another shelter that scanned for a microchip, but then said, we're full. Um, we can't take the dog. And th these people had found the dog on, on, on the side of the road, but the, the shelter couldn't take the dog. They spoke with the animal control for that city because their town has no animal control. And they said, well, we can't take the dog either because when we pick up the dog, we take it to that shelter and that shelter's full. So we have nowhere to put the dog either. So this family was nice enough to take the dog back home, thank God, and, and kept it overnight. And we talked to them, long story short, the, the dog actually got reunited with the owner, which was great. But we were gonna look to take in the dog right. the next morning. But you know, we had a busy day and, we, and I basically, I said to her, Listen, animal welfare is really bad right now. If you can keep this dog safe, can you hang on to it for the night? Like, we need you to help us and be part of this. And, right. and she was great. She's like, I, I get it. That's, I'm just so grateful you guys even answered the phone. I'll do my part. I can't, you know, I have another dog. I can't hold on to this dog forever, <coughs> but like, I'll do my part. Luckily, the dog got home. But I mean, this is just, I've never seen anything like it. Um, what, what's your take? You've been in the yeah, business no, longer. I, I've been a trainer for almost 25 years now, and, and I have been with Bay Path for over 15, and it is unprecedented, the number of surrenders that we're getting due to, like you say, a factor of mental health issues and um, a lot of housing issues, people losing their apartment or whatever, or a landlord deciding, oh, we don't want to take pets anymore, yeah. right? Um, we used to, but now we don't. Or we used to take all dogs, but now we're going to only take dogs under 20 pounds. And, you know, so all these factors are just creating a massive nationwide crisis in sheltering. Um, and, you know, a lot of people will say that, you know, this is a pandemic puppy syndrome, whatever. 
the stuff that I think we were all concerned about didn't really come to pass. Not you know, ev everybody's everybody's first concern, I think, was for separation anxiety. Oh, everybody's getting these dogs, and then the, they're going to go back to work, and we're going to have, you know, dog upon dog upon dog with separation anxiety. But we haven't really seen, I have, I will say, I have not seen much more separation anxiety oh, than I generally do. Um, but how the pandemic impacted was all these external factors that nobody could have anticipated, right? right? Um, and so what's happening as a result of this, this glut or influx of, of surrenders is we can't get the dogs adopted quickly enough. Right, so meaning that, you know, normally we had a nice balance of surrenders and prospective adopters. That was always, you know, the scale didn't go too far either way. Right. And then this is where I think the biggest factor f from my perspective with the pandemic was that all these people went and adopted, yeah. right? So. So now our scale looks like this. Here's because right, contrary to popular belief, most of them did keep their dogs. Yes, absolutely. There was a narrative about everyone got a pandemic puppy absolutely. and never returned them. No, 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 that didn't happen either. But I think what happened is the pool of adopters shrunk. Yeah. Right. So now we have to wait until circumstances change. Kids get older and they become of an an age to adopt and or whatever people move into the area but right now that scale is so tilted yep. um, so dogs are staying much longer in the shelter and that is requiring us to rethink how we care for those dogs because there is a big difference between how we care for a dog I mean yes we always try as best as we can to provide enrichment and you know and to make sure the dogs feel as safe as they can in the shelter and and that has always been our mission but we're talking about you know essentially a week two weeks maybe three weeks would you know would be the longest we would see dogs sit we have dogs who have been at the shelter for months and there's not anything wrong with these dogs, right? It's just the, uh, the numbers just yeah. are, are really stressful. So what we've had to do is, again, rethink, mm -hmm. how do we care for these dogs? Yeah. Because now we're more like a home right. and we want to give the dogs everything that they would have in a home structure with the constraints of being in a shelter, right? With, with different people coming and going and, um, you know, and just the fact that there, here's a new dog next to you that wasn't there yesterday. So all these things that can create stress, we're doing everything we can to minimize that stress. Yeah, and I think it's like this whole new, it's not new, but it's just, it's so much, it's just a greater statistical sample or something, I don't know, but like, you know, you say like nothing's wrong with these, and you're right. Like this is nothing wrong with them, but we are seeing, you know, the the reason so many again, particularly these, the local sur surrenders, and there's so many more. And the feedback we get is there, e even from the animal control officers, there aren't enough local groups taking lo local to absorb this number right. of local. So right. it's a big thing. And so you think about the situations, like we said, alluded to earlier, and when we have this form where we ask, we're not trying to pry, but we're trying to ask, like, what, why is this dog cut? Like, is it a behavior thing? Right. People are very on. You know, you yes. see these forms. We keep them yep. private, but people are very honest about what they're going through. Very honest. I mean, there are some tough home situations, people losing their homes, people having domestic stuff in their homes, like big issues, and people are very honest, and you think, like, when people are going through these things, like they're not able to give, to fill their dog's emotional cup because right. they can't even fill their own, so to speak. Right. They're, some of the vetting is falling by the wayside. We're not even, I'm not talking about abuse. I'm not, you're not even like minor neglect maybe, but like 
these are, you know, we always say these are sentient beings, like they are not impervious to this stress. So you're right. getting these dogs that are just, and, and cats, you know, coming out of these homes that are like teeming with stress. Yes. And we're seeing it. And these animals are coming in with their core. Like usually we say, oh, the shelter, you know, your cortisol level goes up. These guys are coming in right. wired for sound, right. you know, because they're coming out of these really stressful homes. And, you know, we're dealing with that too. So like, we're, you know, very adoptable, but like, Need stress support right out of the gate and then staying longer. Yes, and, it's just and, and a, a lot of the dogs who are coming in are high energy, oh. right? They're, they're not Percy, <laughs> who is, you know, generally, here he is, with the, here, is, here comes, look, is, this is, you know, this is the energy level that yeah. would be fantastic, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's not what we're seeing. We're seeing young, high energy dogs, right, who need that... Who, who need more than, hey, I'm just going to hang out with you in yeah. my living room, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so part of what we've had to do is, again, take a look at what can we do differently yeah. or in addition to everything that we're doing yeah. to help these dogs. And, you know, so, so that leads us to the second thing that we want to talk about, which is choice. Yeah. with dogs. And just before you go into that, I just, you know, to, in addition to that, just some of the other things that, that we've done is, you know, we have designed a leveling system for our volunteers to match up people with their, the, the animals needs with the skill levels of the volunteers. We've provided ongoing training. In the last year, we've onboarded 60, 60 new volunteers. Yep. You know, we're expanding our enrichment program, our foster program, which is amazing. We've been able to do a lot of fostering, a lot of social media promotions, you know, NBC 10 and right. the different things we've done have, have really uh, moved the needle to get visibility. Um, so we're definitely doing a lot um, to try to, you know, do more in shelter, get them into foster homes faster, create more visibility to get them into homes faster. Um, but yeah, so, but choice, I mean, that's the yeah, that's one we're so, going to talk about now. So one of the things that we, you know, I think we touched briefly on this in our last um, show, but um, we want to start to offer dogs, especially dogs in a restricted environment. You know, when, when you have a dog that's in a home and generally um, you can, you know, they're, they have a some choices, right? Like I'm going to sit on the couch or I'm going to meander over and look out the window and, you know, what just in general coming and going. Um, so, so, but that's not necessarily the case with the shelter environment that, um, that they don't have that space to move through, right? right? So we've started looking at where can we give them more choice. But this is super relevant to, um, <laughs> this is super relevant to your dog at home as well, yeah. right? That, that dogs are sentient beings. Um, unfortunately, they didn't come with opposable thumbs. Yeah. So right out of the gate, that takes a lot of their choice away from them. Hi. Hi. Yes, hello. So they can't open a door to let themselves out. Yes, some have dog doors, mm -hmm. and that's great. Um, but in general, we determine when food comes out of the refrigerator, when um, doors open and close. So anything that we can do to help them uh, have the ability to make choice is going to make them, you know, a happier dog. Yeah. Um, and those choices don't have to be big, no. you know. No. Um, but so that's what we're trying to do with the shelter as well, is to give dogs choices. Here are three different enrichment activities. Which would you like to do, you know? Um, but the first place I think we need to look at choice is in handling, mm -hmm. right? With the shelter dogs, they came in. They come in. They're stressed. Um, we don't. We don't get this body language that we see from Percy right now, which is, you know, loose and happy and engaging. Solicitous. Uh, solicitous. <laughs> Hi. Yes. Uh, so, so what we want to be able to do is start having a conversation with our dogs about, 
you know, how do you want to, how do you want me to interact with you, right? Um, as humans, if, you know, if I go over and I sit too close to Liz, she can say to me, hey, back up, woman, yeah. right? <laughs> um, but they can't. So we have to look at their body language and see what is it that they are comfortable with, right? Um, so what we're going to do in our little training segment is we're going to play a little game that's, that's going to lead to how our dogs can explain to us and communicate with us, I'm comfortable, I'm not comfortable, right? So we're going to have that whole thing um, for you on the website as well. Um, so but many you, dogs are so conflicted. Like yes. conflicted too. There's yes. like the ones that are like way over there, the ones like Percy, and then there's that in the middle, like right, uh, right, and those right. Are the I'm not sure. Right, toughest ones, right. So it's a matter of like, I could probably go over and grab Percy. I mean, he's you know we've worked together now. If he knows who I am, and I always come with treats, so I'm like you know I'm the happy person. Um, but still. Isn't it? It's such a, it's such, I just have to interrupt, it's such a commentary on, you know, how positive reinforcement is so, it's just amazing and reinforcing and you're always the one and we haven't been here in months and he, he, it's, so, right. it's association. Right. Like you don't have to, you know, the, the, so many people like, the, oh, I have to walk around with treats for the rest of my life. You haven't offered him a single treat since no. you've been here yet. No. And he will just sit there. And right. watch you, and he thinks you're the best thing ever. Right. And it's just such a PSA for like reinforcement. Reinforcement. Yeah. Works. Yes. Um, but so because <laughs> I'm we, chopped liver to him. So. Yeah. Well, one of the <laughs> things that I think is super important for people at home to do this is because your dogs get vetted, and your dogs need husbandry, right? Meaning they need to be combed or have their ears cleaned or. You, you know, they've got a gunky eye, they've got to have eye drops in. You're going to brush their teeth or check their gums or whatever. Um, so you want to have a way to do that and know, is my dog comfortable? Is my dog uncomfortable, right? Um, I think we've talked before about how, like, this right. is not the best way to approach a dog, right? You could see when I did that that Percy... He didn't push into my hand. He, his head went, he's trying to like yeah. move his head out of the way, right? As opposed to when I come in here, right? I don't get any backing up. I don't get any backing away, right? right. So, so if I want to, this is, this is not my dog. So I'm being super careful and I'm watching him because I'm going to look in his ears. Hi, can I do that? Good boy, that's excellent. So I'm watching the whole time to see, does he look uncomfortable? Is he trying to run away? Is he jumping off of the mm -hmm. chair? Um, you know, what is, what is too much for him, yeah. right? Um, so, so we're gonna play a game in a little bit about um, how we can start to see where choice comes in and, and how we can actually create a situation where a dog can say, I'm not comfortable, or, yeah, I'm comfortable, keep going. Yeah. Right? Whether it's doing nails or any of those things. So, oh, and he's gone to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so he's obviously comfortable. <laughs> All right, great. So, well, let's okay. do it. All right.
going to play a game. It's called the Bucket Game. It was created by an incredible trainer called Shirag Patel. Um, and this is a consent game. It's the way to create a conversation between you and your dog. And for them to be able to say, I'm comfortable, I'm uncomfortable. Um, so all you're going to do is start with a bucket and some treats. And in this game, generally, you, you almost always will see me with a clicker. But it's just one more thing. So I actually am just going to use a verbal marker. Um, so we've got a, a bucket or a teacup or any other thing that you want to hold that's bucket-like. Um, so, and all we're going to do is we're going to reinforce him when he looks at the cup. Yes. And if it's too hard, I'm just going to make it easier. Yes. Yes. And you can see I'm just kind of changing where it is. Yes. 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 Now, the other thing is that in this game, the goal is to have him focused on the bucket, not to have him focused on you, your hands, your eyes, um, what you're doing. You want him focusing on the bucket. So that's what we're building up to. Yes. And you want to have him in a position where, it's, yes, where he's not running into the bucket, that he's holding his position. Because eventually what I want to be able to do is Yes, do whatever husbandry activities. And standing is OK, too. Yes. But what we're not going to do is get a little too excited about the bucket <laughs> and come in and serve ourselves like it's a buffet. And you want him about one to two feet away. Excuse you. And so I can help by looking at the bucket as well. Yes. And little by little, what we're doing is we're increasing the time that he's focused on the bucket. Yes. So as long as he's focused on the bucket, and I'm skipping a lot of steps here. But the goal is to have him focused on the bucket, yes so that then I can be doing yes, yes, yes. So if I'm focused, if he's focused on the bucket, that's saying to me, good boy, I'm going to just toss him away for a sec just so he can, because he's been in that position for a while. Um, so if he's still focused on the bucket, that's saying to me, He's comfortable enough to let me do what I need to do without him being overly stressed. Um, yes. And again, standing or sitting, it's fine, doesn't matter. Yes. And I'm always going to switch positions because I don't want the position, yes, the position that I'm um, in to be the only thing that he's responding to. Like, I can only do this if you are standing, if you are on your knees, if you are sitting on the floor. I, I want him to be able to do it no matter what position that I'm in. Do you want to try it? Yes. All right, come over here. We're going to switch. And you can have him come right over to you. Okay. I don't know how far your mic oh, goes. It doesn't go that far. 
Oh, he just told me. It's like, get in the bucket. And you're going to look at the bucket, because if you look at him, he's most likely going to look yes. towards you. Good, perfect. Yes. <laughs> Good. You too. He's like, that's the bucket woman. And you can change where the bucket is. You can put it down on the ground. Yep, perfect. Yes. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? Am I doing it wrong? Well, yes. you're, you're way five <laughs> steps ahead of where we, where we want to be, right? So, yeah. but, but that's essentially, yes. you know, when he can sit there and look at the bucket and you can, or your vet, this is a great, um, yes. this is a great thing to teach your dog and then take your bucket to the vet with you yeah. so that really I mean it just it doesn't yes. have to be, it's not like we're looking at a cattle feed yeah, bucket yeah, yeah. right yeah, yeah. you know it could be something very small that you yes. could take to the vet with you yeah. and you're playing the bucket game while your vet is yes. you know checking your dog's ears taking your dog's temperature whatever does that make sense good all right so um, again we're going to have uh, there's there's um, a trainer, not Chirag, but somebody who took this game, broke it down into four, four different stages. Um, so we're going to have that on the website under the description of the video um, so that you guys can practice this at home and, and you know, see if you can open up those lines yeah. of communication even more with your dog. I just want to make a quick comment on how how awkward I because I it's so funny to talk about like letting dogs make choices like I don't really touch dogs that aren't mine I never right. asked to touch a dog like I would right. just don't do that just because of my so so awkward to like yes touch him um, you know unless they're like hey come touch right. me I'm right. not gonna be like uh, yeah so I right, right. don't even know how to do that. Yes. Well, so I yeah. need to keep bucket work. Going. Yes. So. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, eh. Yes. But anyway. All right. Well, thank you for that. Oh, yes, of and course. And thank you for tuning in to yes. another episode of Canine Connections. We will have a lot of content as the months go on. Yes. Especially this year. So thank you. And enjoy the fall.